A few years ago, I remember seeing a video from Edward, aka Terraria Help, where they showed what would happen if you broke 1 million demon altars in Terraria. For their video, they used T-Edit in order to stack demon altars on top of each other and break multiple at a time. However, using the power of the campfire glitch, we're able to break demon altars in a much more efficient way, and all without using any sort of external cheats, and today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. In particular, we're going to be taking advantage of a derivative of the campfire glitch, known as the multiplayer campfire glitch, or MCGO for short. On top of having many applications in obtaining items, the multiplayer campfire glitch behaves very interestingly when applied to tiles such as demon altars. When you activate the campfire with a demon altar in its area of effect, the game thinks that the demon altar has been broken. However, Clearly, we can see that the demon altar is still here, which means we can right-click the campfire once again and trick the game into thinking that the demon altar has been broken once again. I think you can see where this is going. If I, hypothetically, got a one millisecond auto-clicker and pointed it at the campfire, Within the span of a few seconds, we've already hit the limit to the maximum number of wraiths that the game will spawn. And, given enough time, the wraiths will eventually settle out into this sort of ball of wraiths, which is oddly hypnotic to look at. On top of spawning wraiths, the other important thing that happens when you break a demon altar is that one of three hard mode auras will spawn into the world. Under normal circumstances, the amount of aura you can spawn into your world is limited by the number of demon altars in your world. However, given that we have an infinite demon altar, this means that we could hypothetically turn our entire world into hard mode ore, given enough time, of course. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go have a snack. One hour later. After letting this run for about an hour, let's see what the effects are on the world. This is what a random section of underground looks like before breaking the demon altars. And here's what that exact same section of underground looks like after breaking the demon altars. Suffice to say, there is a lot of ore. And remember, all of this was created through the power of one glitched demon altar, which is kind of terrifying. But I know why you're here. You'd like to learn how to set this glitch up for yourself. Step zero for setting up the glitch is making sure that you're in multiplayer. On PC versions of Terraria, using a host and play server will work just fine for this. For console versions of Terraria, you'll either need to join a dedicated server or have someone else join a server that you're hosting. I haven't been able to do much testing on console myself, so your mileage may vary. However, I encourage you to give it a shot. Next, you'll need the materials that you see in this chest here. The only thing to note is that you can use any other building block in place of the wood. The first thing you'll need to do is find either a demon altar or a crimson altar anywhere in your world, depending upon which one you have. Next, we need to set up transmutation. Using your building blocks, measure three blocks out from the demon altar, like so. Next, we need to build what is called the hat for the bass statue. So build this upside down U-shaped structure, like so. Currently, your setup should look something like this. Then, build out the floor a little bit and clean out the extra blocks to the side. Then, we need to make room for the trapdoor. Place sand on top of the trapdoor, a wood block to the side, another sand block up top, and a bass statue on top of the sand. For this next step, you'll need to place two blocks in quick succession, so make sure you have both the sand block and the sandstone block at the ready. What we're going to do is we're going to block swap this bottom left tile here, and then place a block of sandstone where the bottom left tile the bass statue currently is. Like so. If performed correctly, you should instantly get one bass statue back. Then, all we need to do is fix the floor, place a switch on the right, a torch on the left, and then connect both objects with wire. If done correctly, you should notice that a few particles appear whenever you toggle the switch. This is because of the invisible bass statue which exists only for the server. 
You can think of this mass statue as being in a different parallel universe to us, hence why we can't see it. The last thing we need to do is set up the campfire glitch. First, make sure that the torch is in the off position in order to turn off the bass statue, place down a campfire, and then toggle the switch three times, as shown here. If performed correctly, you should notice that the campfire has turned invisible, but the particles are still here. Within the previous analogy of parallel universes, you can think of the campfire as being in between parallel universes, and this is part of why MCGO as a glitch is so weird. Now, if I right-click the top right corner of the campfire, my world has been blessed with cobalt. And you can just keep doing this, as much as you'd like. The rate at which you can break demon altars and, therefore, spawn in ore is purely limited by how fast you can right-click. So if you were to, hypothetically, use something like a 1 millisecond right-click macro, if you're doing this in a survival world, you'll probably notice pretty quickly that the rates are a problem because rates do large amounts of damage, go through walls, and are generally a nuisance. However, there's a fairly simple solution to this. Wraiths hover at a fixed height above the ground, meaning that, while standing on a platform such as this, I'm completely safe. However, my glitch setup is down there, meaning that I need to do things slightly differently. Instead, by excavating the area underneath our setup using something such as dynamite, we can make it so that the wraiths will float under us harmlessly. For an actual setup, you'd want to make the hole wider, however this is sufficiently deep, and the general concept is the same, too. Next, a note about how demon altars spawn ore in the world. This is shown most easily with a graph. The first demon altar you break will spawn the most ore. However, when you break your next demon altar, it will spawn only half as much ore as the first. And the third one will only spawn one third the ore of the first one. This pattern continues. For example, the hundredth demon altar will only spawn one one hundredth of the ore of the first one. So this is to say that there are diminishing returns the longer you do this. However, given the sheer number of altars we're breaking, we can just brute force our way around this, given enough time. Lastly, some important notes on server-client desyncs, aka parallel universes. Whenever you use MCGO on an object, such as a demon altar, it moves that object from the server's parallel universe to your parallel universe. And, as a consequence of this, that object exists exclusively for you. This means that, as soon as you disconnect from the world, that demon altar will cease to exist. As a consequence of this, you have to do all of your demon altar breaking in one continuous session. If you disconnect and come back, the demon altar simply won't be there, as upon reconnecting, we're sent back to the server's parallel universe where the demon altar doesn't exist. It's worth noting that even with the demon altar gone, this is still a fully functional transmutation setup. So if we get rid of the campfire and place a door here instead, we can still use this to obtain basically any item in the game. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and consider enabling notifications for future uploads. There's still plenty more applications of MCGO and other glitches I've yet to share, so stay tuned for that. And as always, take care.